Hello adventure seekers! I don't know about you, but I have been avoiding rather rainy and cold destinations of Europe for a very long time, but this is going to change now. Two years ago, I have moved to Spain and for the very first time ever, I feel the urge of exploring one of those colder and rainy destinations. And I am very excited to show you around Scotland in those upcoming videos. And guess what? I am going to start this series of videos of Scotland here in Edinburgh on a very sunny and beautiful day. Let's go! So if you arrive in Edinburgh, the first thing you will see is probably the airport because this airport is by far the busiest airport of Scotland. Now there are two options how to get to the city center. You can either take the tram that is here behind me. A one-way ticket would cost you £7.50 or you can take one of the buses that will drive you directly towards the city center. The tram is scheduled every 8 to 10 minutes so this might be a very good option for you to take it but I am going to take the bus to the city City center which will cost me five pound and fifty and it'll take around 30 minutes to reach the city center it looks like the bus runs up to every 10 minutes it'll take us 30 minutes to get to the city center and you can pay the five pound fifty without any problems contactless with your phone or card and guess what guys I managed to get one of those super cool front row seats on the upper level on the bus So I just arrived in the city center of Edinburgh. The bus stop was right in front of the Scott Monument. I didn't see that much yet, but what I'm seeing is super impressive. Before exploring Edinburgh a little bit more and showing you all the most important corners of the city, I am going to have a little breakfast because I arrived very early. So let's find a restaurant to eat something. I chose Rock Salt Cafe as the place to have my breakfast. I already saw a lot of places on the way here. All of the other places were super crowded. This one here seems to be a little bit calmer. It is a little bit off the main street and it seems quite nice. They offer a very nice Scottish breakfast and the prices here also seem to be fine. The breakfast was pretty good. I feel way better now. I was kind of starving before and I am ready to explore this city of Edinburgh right now with you guys. I would suggest that the first stop will be one of the hills that are here in the city because from there we will definitely get an amazing view all over the city. I will go to Kelton Hill right now. It is about 10 minutes of walking away from the restaurant. One thing you need to know about Edinburgh, the city center is not that big. At least the touristic places are very close to each other, so you can definitely easily walk everywhere. Only if you want to go larger distances, the buses and tram system here in the city will be very useful for you. I am very close to reaching the Kelton Hill viewpoint. This is one of three hills here in the city. All of them have been created by volcanic activity more than 350 million years ago. Be prepared to walk a lot uphill here in Edinburgh because the city center itself is built on hills. It is a bit exhausting to walk up all those hills and also the streets are mostly cobbled streets. So it is a bit exhausting, but it's rewarding. That's for sure. I just climbed the monument. It is a bit complicated. Luckily, there were people giving me a hand to get up here. It is not that easy as it is quite high, but the view is pretty impressive. You can see here behind me, there's a huge hill and that is Arthur's Seat. That is the biggest of those three hills that have a volcanic origin, as I've told you before. And then there will be the city center, the old town and the castle hill. The view is super impressive. You can see on this other side here, the sea behind me. I'm not sure if it's so visible here in the camera because it is actually a bit foggy. I really like this. All right, you guys, now here behind me, you can definitely see the old town. And I think you can probably also hear it in the background. There's the cannon right now on the castle hill. I heard that every day at one o'clock from the old castle they are doing the cannon shots and you can even watch that if you have the entrances for that specific time. Right. Now let's go down from Kelton Hill and continue our tour through the old town of Edinburgh. By the way, as most of you probably know, here in the UK 
the streets are vice versa than in the rest of Europe. They drive on the other side and they also walk on the other side. It happens to me all of the time. I am the idiot that is always walking on the wrong path. And yeah, I guess that's screaming for I am a tourist, right? We are now walking down the Royal Mile. This is a street that is one mile long and it stretches all the way from the Holyrood Palace towards the Edinburgh Castle. So this is why it's called Royal Miles because on both ends of the street you will find a royal building. And on the street in general you will find a lot of restaurants, a lot of shops and artists. So there's a lot to explore. I recommend you to take your time here walking down that one mile long street. Here on the Royal Mai, you will also find the St. Giles Cathedral that is here right behind me. It's a very impressive church. The St. Giles Cathedral has been built in 1124. So this is a very historical place here of Edinburgh and it is very impressive from the outside but even more from the inside. They ask you for a small donation because they need this obviously for the maintenance of this cathedral. Here behind me you can now see the Victoria Street. This is probably the most photogenic spot of Edinburgh. It is famous for its beautifully curved street with those colorfully painted houses. They say that this beautiful colorful street has been the inspiration for JK Rowling when writing her Harry Potter books for the Diagon Alley. Now we are at the Grass Market. This is another very historic place. It is a market ever since the 1500. This place also used to be a place for executions. Today it is still a market and there's a lot of restaurants and a lot of pubs here in this place. We all know British people love their beer and if you want to have one of those, this one here would be the place to go to. Now you guys, I just arrived at Ray Fryer's Kirkyard. This is a very strange touristic attraction in my opinion because this is actually a cemetery. It is quite famous because it is a very historical place. There are tombs that date back to the 16th century. So this place is very old, comes with a lot of history and that's why it's also that famous. Greyfriars Kirkyard also became famous because of a very sad story of Greyfriars Bobby, which was the Sky Terrier of John Grey. When John Grey died, he was buried in Greyfriars Kirkyard, where his dog spent the rest of his life guarding the grave of his owner until he died in 1872. So I think this is a very peaceful place and a very beautiful cemetery, that's for sure. There are a lot of impressive tombs, a lot of very old monuments here, and that is quite impressive. But anyway, I must admit that it does feel kind of awkward that people are in the cemetery here, posing for their photos and so on. That seems a bit off. So I just entered the Edinburgh Castle. Do not miss out on this place. This is like the main attraction here in Edinburgh and I think it will for sure give us some amazing views over the city and it is a very historical place. It is not only like a one building, there are like different buildings. It's a huge castle and I am very curious to explore it. I do recommend you though to buy your ticket online in advance. I am going to leave you the link where you can buy the tickets below in the description section because it is very important. It is already sold out for today. This is the main tourist attraction here in Edinburgh. Let's go and explore this castle now. There are quite a lot of people here already, that's for sure. But to be honest, I was expecting it to be more crowded because this is the second most visited tourist attraction here in the UK. Here in the background is the New Town and maybe you can see it from here from above. The New Town is not really new. Do not expect super modern buildings there. It just means that the New Town is not as old as the Old Town, obviously. There's way more history here and the Old Town is like the heart of Edinburgh. This is the oldest part of the city. There are a lot of different buildings here in this castle and one of them is this here behind me which is the governor's house which has been built in 1742 and used to be the residence of the governor of the castle. Now here behind me you can see St. Margaret's Chapel which is the oldest surviving building here in Edinburgh. King David I has built it in 1130 and he has dedicated it to his mother Margaret. The Mons Meg here behind me is the most famous medieval gun that was a symbol for the power and the prestige of the Scottish kings. I am about to leave the castle of Edinburgh and guys you have to put it on your list. If you visit Edinburgh you cannot leave the city without seeing 
this castle without entering this castle. I found it super interesting, super impressive. It is full of history. I've seen a couple of castles before, but never anything like that. It is huge you can easily spend two hours here that's for sure you will learn a lot about scottish history about the history of edinburgh this place is insane you have to put it on your list do not leave the city without entering the castle of edinburgh guys i hear the bagpipes in the background let's see if we can find them Here are some street musicians with bagpipes, but I think that sounds like the more modern version of it. It sounds kind of interesting, never saw anything like that. Let's check it out. Up there we heard the traditional bagpipes. I'm happy that up there we were able to see them. But here I heard something very different. This was pretty cool actually. It is like the combination of the traditional music with rather modern instruments, which perfectly fits into this area of Edinburgh because we are basically at the border of the old town and the new town. On my right side, there's the new town. On the left side, there's the old town, which we have been exploring all day long. And we will now enter the Princess Street Garden, which is a very beautiful garden with a very impressive view of the castle of Edinburgh. And this is also the garden that divides Edinburgh into old and new town. So this is the Princess Street Garden. We are going to take a little walk here now and then rest a little bit here. There are actually a lot of people here on the grass enjoying the sun, resting a bit and enjoying the impressive view. I am walking uphill again. It is a bit exhausting to walk around Edinburgh, that's for sure, but it's also amazing to explore the city by foot. Edinburgh has definitely already become one of my favorite cities of Europe. It is super beautiful and impressive. I love it. But I do recommend you to always have this bottle with you because here in the city you can also refill it on public water fountains or just use the tap water wherever you will find it in restaurants or whatever. The drinking water quality here is absolutely amazing so you do not have to worry about any of that. This way you will save a lot of money and also do something good for the environment but you already know that. If you've seen my video about 10 things you need to know before coming to Scotland. If you haven't seen that one Make sure to check that out afterwards to be prepared for your trip to Scotland. The old city center of Edinburgh is small as mentioned before. And here you can find multiple story buildings that have been one of the first multiple story buildings around the world. That is because Edinburgh used to have a wall around the city. That wall gave protection to its people that lived inside of the walls. And of course, everybody wanted to live inside of the wall and have that protection. And that was why the city was kind of overcrowded and they had to build it very tight. That is why we also see a lot of small alleys that they call close here in the city center. They are very tight, tiny streets, super cute, but that is the reason. Everything has been built as tight together as possible so that more people would fit into the city center. And then they also started to create the multiple story buildings to fit more and more people into the walls of Edinburgh. Now here behind me you can see the Holyrood Palace. This palace has been the royal residency here in Scotland ever since the 16th hundred and it has been built between 1501 and 15. And this palace has also been the home of Mary, Queen of Scots, from her return to Scotland in 1561 until her forced abdication in 1567. Until today, this building remains the property of the British Crown. Alright, this was it here from Edinburgh. I really enjoyed this city. This has become definitely one of my favorite cities of Europe. I only have a limited amount of time and I think that in 24 hours you can see a lot of Edinburgh and you can definitely see the most symbolic places of the city but honestly 
I wouldn't mind to spend one or two days more here in the city. There's definitely still a lot to explore. For example, I would love to hike up the Arthur's Seat because the views from up there must be super impressive. So I would say that if you only have a limited amount of time, just like me, one day here in Edinburgh is enough to get to know the city and to learn about the history of Edinburgh. But if you have a little bit more time, spend two days here, if not even three days, to take it a little bit slower than I did today and also to explore a little bit more of the surroundings of the city. I am now ready to explore further areas of Scotland. I am very excited to get to know the biggest city of Scotland, that is Glasgow. And most importantly, I am super excited for my road trip to start through the highlands of Scotland. That is the main reason why I wanted to come here and I cannot wait to start that road trip. I really hope that you found this video a bit helpful to plan and organize a bit your own trip here to Edinburgh and to get a good impression of the city and of things to do here in the city. If you like this video, I would highly appreciate your support. Drop me a thumbs up and if you have any open questions left, feel free to drop them below in the comment section. I will answer all of them as soon as possible. And now do not forget to subscribe to my channel because I will show you Glasgow next and also take you on the road trip. I hope to see you next Friday in the next video.